You could get married if you like. <laughs> There's old Adams, Robin's faithful servant. He loves you with all the frenzy of a boy of fourteen. <laughs>
Blue, here's some peppermint rock for old Gaffer Gadby. A set of false teeth for pretty little Ruth Rowbottom. And a pound of snuff for the poor orphan girl on the hill. Oh, Rose, the pity that so much goodness should not help to make some gallant youth happy for life. Rose, why dost thou harm that little heart? Is there none here the way whom thou mightst learn? And if there were such a one, verily, it would ill become me to tell him so. Oh, nay, dear Warder, <coughs> what true love is, there is little need of primformality. Hush, dear aunt, for thy words pain me sorely. Hung in a plated dish cover to the knocker of the workhouse door, with naught I could call my own, save a change of baby linen and a book of etiquette. Little wonder <coughs> if I've always regarded this work as the voice from a parent's tomb. This hallowed volume, composed, if I may believe the title page, by no less an authority than the wife of a Lord Mayor, has been, through life, my guide and monitor. By its solemn precepts, I have learned to test the moral worth of all who approach me. The man who bites his bread or eats peas with a knife, I look upon as a lost creature. And he who has not acquired the proper way of entering and leaving a room is the object of my pitying horror. There are those in this village who bite their nails, dear aunt, and nearly all are wont to use their pocket combs in public places. In truth, I could pursue this painful subject much further, but behold, I have said enough. But is there not one among <coughs> them who is faultless in thine eyes? For example, young Robin, he combines the manners of a Marquis. Models of a Methodist. <laughs> Could thou not love him? And even if I could, how should I confess it unto him? For lo, he is shy and saith naught. <laughs>
she weren't quite so particular, I might venture. But no, even then I should be unworthy of her. Ah. My kind master is sad, for the ribbon moat. Hush! As you love me, breathe not that hated name! Twenty years ago, in horror at the prospect of, in, of inheriting that hideous title, and with it the ban that compels all who succeed to the baronetcy to commit at least one deadly crime per day for life, I fled my home and concealed myself in this innocent village under the name of Robin O'Cattle. My younger brother, Despard, believing me to be dead, succeeded to the title and its attendant curse. For twenty years, I've been dead and buried. <laughs> Don't dig me up now. <laughs> Dear master, it shall be as you wish, for have I not sworn to obey you for ever, for ever, for ever? Yet, as we are here alone, and as I belong to that particular description of good old man to whom truth is a refreshing novelty, let me call you by your own right title once more. Sir Riven Murgatroyd, Baronet of Renegal. My great hours at the seaside. My <laughs> poor old friend, would there were more like you? Uh, would there were indeed. But I bring you the tidings. Your foster brother Richard has returned from sea. His ship, the Tom Tiff, rides yonder at anchor. And he himself is even now in this very village. My beloved foster brother, no, no, it cannot be. It is even so. Now see, he comes this way. <laughs>
Well, why, Lord love you, Rob. That's but a trifle of what we have done in the way of sparing folk. I believe I may say, without exaggeration, that the merciful little Tom Tit has spared more French frigates than any craft to float. <laughs> take for a British sailor to brag. So I'll just stole my joint title and billet. Aye. The last heaving, that's me. What's brought you on, Cockbell? Alas, Dick, I love Rose Maywood, and love in vain. You love in vain? Come, that's too good. Why, you're a fine, strapping, muscular young fellow, <laughs> tall, strong little together mast, tall as a boat. <laughs> ah, a baronite to boot, if all had their rights. Hush, Richard, not a word about my true friend, which none here suspect. Yes, I know well enough that few men are better calculated to win a woman's heart than I. I'm a fine fellow, Dick, and worthy any woman's love. Happy the girl who gets me, say I, but I'm timid, Dick, shy, nervous, modest, retiring and diffident. And I cannot tell her, Dick. I cannot tell her. Oh, you've no idea what a poor opinion I have of myself and how little I deserve it. <laughs> you called to mind that years ago. He swore that, come what might, we'd always obey our heart's dictates. I, Dick, and I've always kept that oath. In doubt, difficulty, and danger, I have always asked my heart what I should do, and it has never failed me. Right! Well, let your heart be your compass, and with a clear conscience for your binnacle light, you'll sail ten knots on a bowline, clear of shoals, rocks, and quicksand. <laughs> <laughs> What does my art say to me, this here difficult situation? Why? It says, Dick! It says, oh, he calls me Dick because he's known me from a valley. <laughs> you ain't shy. You ain't modest. Speak you up for him as he's. Robin, just you lay me alongside, and when she's become under my lee, I'll spin her in. That'll serve to fish you two together for life. Can you do this thing for me? Will you, do you think? Yes, there's no false modesty about you. <laughs> You're what I would call bumptious self assertiveness. I mean, the expression, in its complimentary sense, has already made a boatswain to made of you. And we'll make an abro of you in time if you work it properly, you dear incompetent old imposter. Why, I'd give my right arm for one tenth of your modest assurance. <laughs> my volumetry is from me, and of all the afflictions are cursed, with which a man says that happened and had an indifferent nature's the worst. Look, never as clever could be, a kind of fellow of ass. You must learn to stop with your blow and tell me not just you have the chance. Opinion of him. 
yourself. For a finer fellow, don't walk. Still, I'll do my best for him. Speak up for him as if it were your own father. That's what my heart's are remarking to me just now. But here she comes. By the poor animal, but she's a tight little craft. <laughs> Come, Dick. She's not for you. And yet, she's a fit to marry Lord Nelson. By the flag of old England, I cannot look on her unmoved. Well, that's well said. I am agitated. So flatter by my girl. That is not. It will pass. This here heart and mind are dictating to me like anything. The question is, have I the right to disregard its promptings? Can I do aught to relieve thine anguish? For it seemeth to me thou art in sore trouble. This Oh, my girl, take that. I'm too flat of that. Oh. <laughs> I ain't anything, I ain't never seen anything like you in, in all my born days. Part of will be if you were in the loveliest girl I've ever set eyes on. There. I can't say fairer than that, can I? No. The question is, is it meet that an utter stranger should thus express himself? <laughs> Yes. Always speak the truth. <laughs> I have no thought to say this here to you on my own account. For truth to say, I was chartered by another. But the moment it sees you, my heart, it up and it says, This is the very girl for you, Dick, it says. Speak up to her, Dick, it says. Oh, it, it calls me Dick because we was at school together. <laughs> Tell her all, Dick, it says. Don't sail on the false colours. That's me. That's what my heart tells me to say. But in my rough, common sailor fashion, I've said it. And I'm awaiting for your reply, miss. <laughs> I'm a trembling, miss. Looky here. That's nervousness. <laughs> <laughs> Keep no one in unnecessary suspense. Behold, I will not keep you in unnecessary suspense. <laughs> Give me shelter within. 
Aye, aye, my lad. I have, so to speak, spoke her. And she refuses? Well, no, I can't rightly say that she do. Then she accepts my darling. Oh, here's the bride, here's the bride, and the nuptial dot is thine. Here's your faces, here's the faces, here's the bride, here's the bride. Now, what should a maiden do when embraced by the wrong gentleman? <laughs> belay, my lad, belay. You, you don't understand. Oh, sir, belay, I beseech you. You see, it's like this. She accepts, but it's me. <laughs> You can't have everything. 
and a better hand at turning in a dead eye, don't walk a deck. And what an accomplishment that is in a family man. No, no, I won't hear a word against Dick. I'll stick up for Dick through thick and thin. Thank you, Rob. You're a true friend. I've always acted according to my heart's dictates. And such orders as them, no man should disobey. In saving all this nation of war, I prefer to fall to be a mine. In some seas of baby war, I'm your servant boy, I'm your servant My heart says to this maiden strike, she's captured you. She's just the sort of maid you like. You know you, if ever man her heart you gain, I shall be time. But what it says to me, my fame, this heart of mine, this heart of mine.
once made an affidavit, but it died. <laughs> it died! It died. <laughs> Whoa, but see, they come, Sir Despard and his evil crew. Hide, hide! They're all mad, quite mad! What makes you think that? Oh, shh! They sing choruses in public. <laughs>
infamy, steeped in infamy. But whose heart eases the heart of a little child. But what is a poor baronet to do when a whole picture gallery of ancestors step down from their frames and threaten him with an extra hoshiating death unless he commit his daily crime? <laughs> but I am even with them. I get my crime over first thing in the morning. <laughs> And then, for the rest of the day, I do good. I do good. I do good! <laughs> Two days since, I stole a child and built an orphan asylum. <laughs> Yesterday, I robbed a bank! <laughs> and endowed a bishopric. <laughs> today, today I carry off Rose Maybon! <laughs> and endow a cathedral. But this is what it is, to be the toy and the Port of a picture gallery. <laughs> but I will be bitterly revenged upon them. <laughs> I shall give them all to the Leeds Art Gallery. <laughs> and no one shall ever look upon their faces again. <laughs> Bows to bring her to? No, it says. You did not. 
ort. And I won't ort a cord. So, you really feel at liberty to tell me that my elder brother lives, that I may charge him with his cruel deceit and put on his own shoulders the hideous thraldom under which I have suffered for so many years. Free, free at last to live a blameless life and to die beloved and regretted by all who knew me. <laughs> Understand, I think I go with bigger and shape and the step must be taken. It's neatly planned, I think so too. I'll write a
bridegroom, ere you wed each other, I claim young Robin as my elder brother.